I'm going to teach you for a while on the topic of the Old and New Covenants. I'm seeing uh, an, uh, a resurgence of um, Old Testament Christianity uh, among a lot of people. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to give you a balance on this. And uh, I'm not going to teach anything that isn't 100% accurate. We're going to teach the Word. But what I have seen people begin to do now, which is disturbing to me, is I see a lot of Christians, a lot of preachers, um, that are trying to put people back under the law. And when we're not under the law. Uh, if you read Galatians, Paul wrote the entire book of Galatians to confront law and grace. And the, the Jewish believers were, in the book of Galatians, the Jewish believers uh, were trying to get the Gentile believers to come back under the law. Trying to get them to, now you have to worship. I have a friend, I love him to pieces, but he believes that our worship services should be between Friday night sundown and Sunday night sundown. And he don't believe that if we, if we don't have it then, well, it didn't, it didn't rhyme. Because that's the Sabbath. That's the Jewish Sabbath. Guess what? I am a Jew. I am a Gentile believer. And we're going to show you some things. Now, the New Testament is not free of, of rules and regulations. Amen. There's rules and regulations in the New Testament. Because God has standards. Okay? So I'm not saying that God doesn't have any standards. But I'm telling you, you don't have to worship on a certain day. I think we should worship every day. Yeah. Morning, noon, and night. Anytime we get a chance. And we can get together with uh, saints on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day we want to worship. With other saints. But there are certain people trying to put people back. I know Christians who believe if you eat shrimp, that it's an abomination. And you shouldn't eat shrimp. And if you eat bacon, then uh, you are in, you're in trouble with God. It's a sin. Now, what, what, am I, what, I'm, what I'm telling you is, there is a resurgence of this, and I'm going to put a quietus to it, and I'm going to, is that the right word? Yeah, that's that word. That was good. Thank you. Uh, we're we're going we're to put a stop to that false teaching. It's false teaching. Amen. Do you understand me? False teaching. We're not under the law. The Apostle Paul said, for ye are not under the law, but you are under grace. grace. Thank you. You're under grace. We're going to understand the difference between law and grace. Now, I'm going, to say, I'm going to say something. Christians should live a better, cleaner, purer life than any Jew ever did. Amen. We have the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 But Jesus got all over the Jews. All over them. You Pharisees and Sadducees, you hypocrites. You wash the outside of the building, but on the inside, you're a dead men's bones. Amen. A whitewashed sepulcher full of dead men's bones. You straighten a gnat and swallow a camel. That's what he said. You look to the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. Amen. 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 So we're going to look, and it's, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get into this. <laughs> you know how I drag. <laughs> so it'll probably take a few weeks, but we're going to tie some Bible stories in with it. Just like the Bible story we just now saw. With the woman who was caught in adultery. I've changed the title of it to the men who were caught in judgment. <laughs> 
the men who were caught in judgment. Was she, was she caught in adultery? Well, Jesus, yes, I will tell you. Some people say, well, we don't know she committed adultery. Not because she didn't get to speak up for herself, because it does say that in the, in the chapter before. And, and we don't know because there was nobody to testify that actually testified. But we know that she did from the words of Jesus. Because Jesus said, go and sin no more. If she hadn't sinned, he wouldn't have told her that. But what did he do? He didn't condemn her. Hallelujah. The very instant that you condemn another person, judgment comes on you. The very instant you condemn someone else, judgment comes right back on you. It will affect your body. It will affect your mind. It will affect your spirit. I told you last week about a woman who forgave someone who had been uh, uh, hurt her. And as soon as she did, all of the pain that she had that was in her body that was keeping her from going to church left her and she was instantly healed and she was able to go back to church. After years of not being able to go to church, what did she do? She cleansed. She cleansed the inside. The inside. We need to be cleaned on the inside. Amen. You can look perfect on the outside. That don't, that don't fool nothing. That for sure don't fool God, does it? God knows what's going on on the inside. He knows what you're doing in secret. Amen. 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 He knows what you're thinking in secret. He knows what, your, what, what bitternesses you have in secret. Glory be to God. Cleanse us, Lord. Create in me a clean heart over God and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. That was the prayer of the psalmist David. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and renew thy Holy Spirit within me. See, we get clogged with all this gloppity gloop in our life. The pipes get clogged and they don't drain and it stagnates and you stink. And God wants us clean. He wants that pure water running through and the pipes clean. And we don't want nothing in us that's junky. No bitterness, no wrath, no anger, no adulteries. Amen. You know? But the sins of the harder are even greater than the sins of the flesh. Because of the sins of the heart or what, what, the, what uh, uh, Satan committed. Pride. Arrogance. Superiority. I'm that, oh, you get that going in a church? Everybody know, everybody's nose starts turning up and you, you got a bunch of people ready for drowning. Amen. Amen? Amen. So, hallelujah. We're going to look at some things. I have no idea what I'm going to say. But it'll be good, I bet. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Understanding the glory of the new covenant. In, I believe it's in Hebrews. We'll get into the actual verses later. But it was talked about Moses. That Moses, that brought the Ten Commandments. That the glory of God was so on him. That when he came down out of the mountain, you remember the story. He glowed with the glory of God. Amen. That's the glory of God. It, it makes you shine. But the Bible says the glory of Moses was nothing to be compared with the glory of Jesus in the new covenant. It's a greater glory. The Bible says that the glory of the former house, the letter or the law that was given to the Jews did you notice I said to the Jews, not to the Gentiles? Everybody say, I'm a Gentile. I'm a Gentile. Now, unless you were born a Jew, you're a Gentile. Amen. Amen. You've got to remember that. When you read some of the passages in the Old Testament and you point your finger at someone else, you better find out if that's for the church or if that's for the Jews. Amen. Because otherwise, we'd probably have to take you out and stone you today, sister. <laughs> <laughs> pretty we pretty sure more. because if this fabric here has mixed threads, we could stone. Uh, if your if your son or daughter cusses you, 
as you should sell them in the old covenant. You could you could you could stone your children if they if they cussed you. I don't know if that's an adult child or if that's a, a, a small child. I'm sure it's not a small child. But you understand, we're not under that kind of law today. And then the Bible says that Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. Are you listening to me? Jesus ful fulfilled the law and the prophets. And what he did here with these Pharisees that wanted to kill this woman caught in adultery. He just confronted them. He got right in their face. Amen. You know what? Uh, if you read in between the lines, he said, "You without sin cast the first stone." Yeah. How many of them had committed adultery? Maybe they had physically committed adultery. Maybe they just committed adultery in their heart. Because Jesus is also the one that told them, he who looks at a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her in his heart. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen? Amen? Jesus has brought us into a new covenant. The Bible says with greater promises. A better covenant with better promises. And in this covenant, we're going to flow. See, the old covenant... We're going to show you in just a second. The old covenant was based on doing everything right. The new covenant is based on being right. Being right. If you be right. <laughs> bad, bad verbiage. If you, I'm going to say it anyway because I like what, I just wanted to say it that way. If you be right, then you're going to be right. Amen. Amen. If you are right, you will do right. A uh, lot of misuse, we've already said that. But in Romans 15, 4, it says, Whatever things were written before in the Old Covenant were written for our learning, that through the patience and comfort of scriptures we might have hope. The Old Covenant was written to lead us to Christ. The scripture says, and the Apostle Paul said about the Old Covenant. Now, am I saying don't read the Torah? No. My saying, when I say the Torah, does anybody know what that is? Matthew, Mark, or, I mean, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The, the, the Torah, the old laws is the Torah. Uh, uh, sure, read it. But it's for your learning that you might be led to Christ. The Apostle Paul said this about the old covenant. He said the old covenant is a schoolmaster. And the purpose of it was to lead us to Christ. Are you listening to me? Amen. We're not going to go out and kill anybody. We're not going to go out and stone anybody. We're going to love them to Jesus. That's what, that's what we're going to do. Amen. And we're not going to condemn them. Amen. Now the correction. I had somebody say to me, well you just don't correct. You, you, you're just not preaching against sin. I said, oh, I preach against sin plenty. I preach against sin to the church. To the sinner, I preach the good news. This guy was saying, well, you just don't preach the gospel. He told me this the other day. You don't preach the gospel. I said, oh, really? And this is a great, this man was a great scholar, so I just turned it right on him. I said, I don't preach the gospel. I said, what is the word gospel in the Greek? He gave me the Greek word. I said, what does it mean in the Greek? He didn't want to tell me that. He did. It means the good news. I'm preaching the good news to the sinners. Jesus is your Savior. I'm preaching the good news to the sick. Jesus is the healer. I'm, good, I'm preaching good news to the depressed. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm preaching good news. Now to the church, sitting in our living room, I'm going to tell you to line up <laughs> and straighten it out and get the sin out of our lives. Amen. But to the world, they don't have Jesus. They don't even have the ability to get it right. You can't get it right without Jesus. Amen. You don't clean a fish before you catch it. You can't 
even clean a fish before you catch it. We just get people to Jesus and we let Jesus clean them. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now I'm going to say some phrases that I want you to maybe learn or write some of these phrases down. These are interesting. I learned these in Bible college years ago. The In the old is the new concealed. This is the Old Testament. In the old is the new concealed. In the new is the old revealed. The purpose for the New Testament. This is why I tell people, brand new Christians, people, brand new Christians ask me, what should I read? I, you should read the book of John. You should read the New Testament. You should lead, read the letters of the epistles. You should find out who you are in Christ Jesus. And then later, you go back. Because see, the Bible says that the new is the image. And the old is the shadow. What are you going to study? The shadow first or the image? You're going to study the, the image first. Then we'll go back and look at the shadow, which is the old covenant, and see how it blends and ties in. This is what David is so good, uh, David Brandt is so good about when he teaches us on types and shadows, and he teaches us on Wednesday nights on things, you know, like the tabernacle and the Passover. Every one of those things is Jesus. All those things in the Old Testament, it actually symbolizes Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm so, I love that. I love that. What's contained in the old is explained in the new. What's contained in the old is explained in the new. But the new is the image. The old is the shadow. Study the image. Let me tell you what counterfeit experts do. Now, I'm, if I'm going to ask a question, I'm going to give you a chance to guess. You want to guess on a question? You don't want to? I'm going to let you guess on a question. Here's the question. What does a counterfeiter study? Does he study counterfeit bills? Or does he study the real? He studies the real so he can recognize the counterfeit. Now, the old is not the counterfeit, but it's the image. We're going to study the image so that we can understand the shadow. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I know I'm teaching you today. I'm not preaching, I'm teaching, but I might every, every once in a while jump in there and preach a little bit. But uh, now we're going to look at this passage. This is a, this is a passage that was actually quoted in the Old Testament. It was actually originally written in the Old Testament. And uh, in Hebrews 8.10, and I can't remember where the passage is that this is quoting. If you know, Brother Dave, if you can tell me in a minute. Hebrews 8.10 says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write it in their hearts. And I will be to them a God. And they shall be my people. To me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. And every man his brother. Saying know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities. Will I remember no more? In that he saith, a new covenant. Say a new covenant. Amen. I want you to I want you to look this verse up in several translations. And in the Greek, if you know how, Hebrews 8 13. In that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. What does that mean? When the new covenant come, now the first one is old. Are you listening? Sounds simple, doesn't it? Why do we have so many people trying to pull us back under the old covenant? Because they don't understand the purpose of the old covenant. Now that which decayeth, what's he talking about? He's the same sentence. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old. What's he talking about? 
Say old covenant. The old covenant is decaying and waxing old. And ready to vanish away. Do you know the Bible says that if we walk in the spirit, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh? Did you hear me? If you walk in the spirit, you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk in love, the Bible says love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of all the law. Love never did commit adultery. Love never did lie on its neighbor. Love never did cheat on its income tax. Love never did cuss their parents. Love, amen. amen. We don't have to go over what the love is. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. All of those things that God says love is, that's what we are. And if you're not living, living up to it, it's because you're not studying. You must be looking at the counterfeit, look at the real. You want to see who you are? Go oh, read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. That's who you are. That's your image. That's Christ in you because God is love. love. And love is in love's in me. And if you're not letting love flow through you, you're stifling God inside of you. You're holding him down. You're grieving the Holy Spirit and quenching the Holy Spirit because that love is what's trying to control you and you're letting the flesh control you. He cussed me, so by golly, I'll give him a good cussing right back. Well, God will forgive you if you repent, but you don't even have to do it. Amen. And you need to stop doing it. Because you need to grow up and stop being babies. Amen. 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 Mature Christians don't act like that. Amen. 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 Mature Christians don't harm their own bodies. Because I didn't love. Well, why is it wrong for me to smoke? Why is it wrong for me to drink? Why is it wrong for me to chew? Why is it wrong for me to run with those who do? Because you're not loving yourself. Amen. You're not loving yourself. Quit it. Abusing prescription drugs. Why? You're not loving yourself. Yeah, but I need it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you need Jesus and you need self-control. Amen. Hello? Am I preaching? <laughs> Let's lean on the master. Amen. Let's lean on the master. Are any of us going to slip and fall like that woman? Yeah. Is Jesus going to condemn us? No. He's going to say, neither do I condemn thee. Now, go and sin no more. But now, let's get back to the first part of this. Did you ever find out where this was? Thank you. Jeremiah, this is a direct quote of Jeremih 31, 33. Hebrews 8, 10, and 11. I'm going to read 10 again. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. After what days? After the, the old. It's the, after the old is gone, the new's come. Amen. See? He says, I will put my laws into their minds and write it in their hearts. You must be born again of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Ghost comes on the inside of you and you say, Jesus Christ, you're Lord of my life. Come into my life. I repent of my sins. I turn away from my sins and I turn to you. You're my Savior, Jesus. Come in. Fill me, Holy Ghost. Fill me, Holy Ghost. Fill me, Holy Ghost. I am yours. I want the Spirit of God in me. When that happens and you're born again, the instant that you're born again, God begins to write his laws in your mind. He begins to write his laws in your heart. And you'll do something and you'll say something and you'll know it's wrong. You will know it's wrong. And if you will repent and let him lead you and not grieve him by keeping doing those same things. See, you can, you can, uh, you can 
Grieve the Holy Spirit to the point that he'll, he'll leave you alone. You can grieve him. You can quench him. You can tell him. Build a cows. You know, if you, uh, if you rub against the skin uh, against something enough, maybe with working with a hammer or with, with some kind of a tools, you can build up such a callus that you can't even feel pain in that one area. There's such a callus. And if you do that with the Holy Ghost, and you keep sinning over and over and over and over and over, and you don't repent, you don't even feel the conviction anymore. Well, I don't feel convicted. I've had people tell me this. Well, I just don't feel convicted. Yeah, I got drunk and had sex, but I don't feel convicted. I don't care if you feel convicted or not. You are convicted. Repent, repent, repent. It doesn't matter. Get rid of that old hardness off of you. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't feel convicted. Well, big whoop de do. <laughs> Who's that real big fat guy? Well, whoop de freaking do. You know? <laughs> Band down by the river. <laughs> are you listening? Don't matter if you feel convicted, you are convicted. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen. But it can't come from you obeying the law. It has to come from your heart being changed. Amen. You see, I'm going to explain something about the law. I don't have a clock. I need to turn my, let me put my phone up here. I don't even know what time it is. Oh, I get so carried away. Now, we're going to stay on this for a while, so just stay with me. Amen. I'm going to videotape this, and you're, I'm going to give you a good foundation. Amen. Glory to God. But it has to come from the heart. In the old covenant, people ask me these questions all the time. I love what you posted, Kevin, yesterday on Facebook. It was so awesome. But people ask me all the time, well, why? Why did God tell them to go in and wipe out a city and kill all those babies and all those people? Why did he go tell them to go and kill Moloch and, and to throw down the altars of Baal and just, just kill everybody off? I explained this to somebody yesterday. I said, it's very simple. There was no heart change in the Old Testament. So there had to be behavioral correction. That's all there was. When your heart cannot change, if your heart cannot change, if you just cannot quit drink, uh, drinking and driving, then don't put your roll button in jail. And that's where you stay for a while, and then you don't get a license back. But some people actually have to go to jail for months and months and months because they couldn't quit drinking and driving. Hello? Well, then if God will get a hold of your heart, and change your heart, and deliver you from the me syndrome, and deliver you from the alcohol, then guess what? You don't need to go to jail. <laughs> you don't need the behavioral training. You don't need to be the rat in the maze that gets shot so he'll know we're not to turn next time. Because it comes from the heart. And that's what being born again is. You don't want to sin anymore. Amen. I like how Marilyn Hickey said years ago, she'd say sipping saints or slipping saints, you know. And uh, she said, she said, well, I, she said, I tell people, I, can, I drink all that I want to drink. I commit adultery as much as I want to. I'm free. She said, I just don't ever want to do any of those things because I have Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. Amen. Am I free to drink? Yeah, I'm free to drink, but I want to. She said, I just drink all I want. Amen. Let your heart be changed. If you see yourself doing a bunch of wrong behaviors, it's not your behaviors that's the problem. It's your heart. Amen. Are you listening to me? <coughs> the behaviors is not your problem. Your heart is the problem. And only God can change your heart. That's why you need to hit this altar and say, God, change my heart. Amen. Take the me out of me. And put the Jesus in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. I will put my laws in their minds and write it in their heart. 
That's called being born again. Amen. Are you born again? Yes. How many is born again today? Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. If you're born again, Jesus lives on the inside of you. Amen. The greater one lives on the inside of you. The greater one lives on the inside of you. The greater one lives on the inside of you. Sin does not have dominion over it. Do you know what? It, right before it talks about law and grace, you know? Right before it talks about law and grace, it says, Sin shall not have dominion over you. Because you are not under the law. You are under grace. Amen. Grace gives you so much power. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Grace comes up in us. Grace is a power source. And that power source of grace comes up in us and gives us power over temptation. Amen. It helps us to turn the other direction. Hallelujah. And, and if we don't turn the other direction, well, then we have the grace and the mercy of God to go to. And the scripture tells us in James that mercy triumphs over judgment. And that's what Jesus said. You know, in closing, and then we will get back to some more. I, I didn't even get into the, the woman, uh, but I will. I mean, the men in judgment. Uh, <laughs> amen. But I want to take you to one of my favorite verses. And uh, this is uh, one I quoted to this man yesterday who was... Telling me it wasn't mean enough. Bless his heart. John chapter three. He just don't. He just don't know Jesus and how Jesus is. But look what Jesus said. I didn't. How many of you know? I didn't write this. Did you know that I didn't write this? All right. John chapter three. Not verse sixteen. Verse seventeen. Seventeen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Amen. Greek word for condemn there is, I forgot it. What was it? Uh, I'll remember it later. Uh, to condemn the world. It means to pronounce a judgment. Catacrino, thank you. The world. But that the world through him might be saved. Jesus didn't come. Let me tell you something about that story with the woman that had committed adultery and the guys that were happy to throw rocks at her. There was only one person there was one person qualified to throw stones at her. Jesus. Jesus. The one person that could have rightfully thrown a stone at her refused. Why? Because he is a God of mercy and a God of love. Hallelujah. And he saw in her a potential of a heart change. Heart change. Heart change. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus, change our hearts, Lord. Thank you for not condemning us. Lord, there's not one person in this room that deserves condemnation as much as I do. Not one. Not one that deserves it any more than me. But Lord, when the stones were raised against me, thank you, Jesus. Amen. When the stones were raised against me, Jesus, <laughs> you said you without sin cast the first stone. You said to me, Jesus, you said, neither do I condemn you, son. Go and sin no more. Oh, Father, we thank you for this new covenant of mercy. This new covenant that when we deserve judgment, you don't even give it to us, Lord. You give us mercy. Thank you for the mercy of God. 